Ooh, hey y'all. Welcome replay viewers. Hi. Actually, I was in the thick of planting when I thought, well, I could go ahead and do a quick video just to give you a, just a little idea of one way that we use permaculture, Epsom salt, uh, banana peels, compost, and our backyard chickens. So I hope I have a good connection. I'll try not to wiggle around too much in case it's a little bit um, jumbly. So just bear with me. It will be a short uh, web or thingy, periscopey thingy because we're hot. It's already hot here. It's like 85 degrees. I'm in Kingwood, which is just north, barely north of Houston, Texas. We're in zone 9B. And I have my fall garden remnants. I'm going to turn the camera around to show you. Okay, so here I'll give you a, here's a long garden bed. It goes way down, got some eggplants left over, um, and these are my Brussels sprouts. And I'll just focus on this one piece of it. Y'all ask me questions, and if I see them, I will definitely answer. Um, the connection's not that great. Sometimes the comments come in later. So bear with me, it'll be qu super quick. So the moon cycle from the Farmer's Almanac says we can plant our cucumbers and tomatoes. So I have seedlings I started in my greenhouse. When I say greenhouse, I don't mean anything fancy. My mom gave me like a little $20 one from Big Lots. Welcome y'all. So here's my tomato seedlings. These are just five of them. I have more over here. I also have cucumbers. And so what we did was we put our pine straw and leaves in here to try to prevent this weeds. And you can see I've, I've done pretty well. I really haven't weeded much. Um, Underneath these Brussels, the reason I'm not picking them out yet is, let's see if I can zone in, we have some small Brussels on each one. I just harvested some yesterday and I want to give these an, one more week before it gets too hot to let them grow. And I've already got my onions planted because I knew I was going to put my tomatoes here as well. And so in permaculture you can kind of continuously plant. So with the crop rotation issues, this is in the brassica family, like Brussels sprouts, cabbage, broccoli, and cauliflower. Tomatoes are in the nightshade family. So nightshades would be like eggplant, tomatoes, and sweet potatoes, which is kind of odd, but they are. So I try to rotate around. I don't do anything fancy. I just try to poke something in the ground wherever it can get. <laughs> so I've dug my holes. I've dug them way deeper than these tiny little seedlings need because I'm gonna squish the dirt up with my hand once I get my gloves on. I'm gonna pop um, a banana peel. They say as much as a whole banana peel, but I only had enough for one or two little slices. And then I'm gonna put some of this Epsom salt, which is actually magnesium. And even though it's just a trace mineral, tomatoes thrive on it and it helps them to absorb all the rest of the nutrients. Oh, pretty butterfly. Oh. So that's pretty much all I'm doing today. I am taking these Brussels sprouts out a week from now and I'm going to let the seedlings start in the ground because the moon cycle is good, which I don't know if that matters, but uh, I'm going to put them in while I have the chance today. And then the um, companion planting, the onions were planted about two or three weeks ago because they're a little earlier than tomatoes. So then next week I'll either chop these brussels at the ground or I'll kind of tug a little and if it doesn't seem like it'll disturb my tomatoes, I'll just pull them out by the root. Um, the other thing I'll probably do is I'll wait about a week. I'm not going to put the tomato cages in. They suggest that you put them in, but I don't want to poke any of these Brussels sprout roots any more than I've already dug. And it'd just be easier to pull them out when I have the tomato cages. I also have the cucumbers and what I have over here is some peas growing already. And then I left this fence line, which I'm going to have to weed a little bit. Um, my hubby went ahead and we did it on the back side of the fence and I have this stuff here. And as you can see, I mean, I have some weeds, but it's really not that bad. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and weed as much as I can off of here. And then I'm gonna plop the cucumbers in here. They were over there before where the peas are. So I've got peas where the cucumbers used to be. I don't know the fancy schmancy name for either one of those type of family of plants, but I know that that'll be a good rotation. And that's all I'm gonna do today other than plant some ornamentals. We have a tortoise, a sulcata tortoise, and I got some cool seeds right here that we've germinated and sprouted out. These are hibiscus. So I'm gonna plant three of them in the um, turtle habitat, and then I'm gonna plant a couple in the chicken habitat. 
so that we'll always have beautiful flowers and nice shade that's not poisonous for our chickens. So anyway, if you're warm enough, I know much of the country is still pretty cool. Um, if you're not warm enough to plant, then this is a great time to throw down that pine straw or if you have regular straw or if you have composted up leaves or even just um, chopped leaves, it'll help prevent the weeds that are gonna come for y'all who are in a cooler zone in the next month. That's what we did. Um, and then you can put your chickens in. We have a mobile run that we bring in here and they eat some of the bugs and they eat some of the weeds, obviously. So some of this looks a little choppy because we have had the chicks in here, uh, excuse me, the hens in here, and they've been doing some work for us. And then I guess I'll take you right down here. I think two or three days ago, I picked our fourth or fifth round of broccoli. And as you can see, I do have some that are flowering. So I'm gonna let a few seed. And we had like 18 of these. We only have about 10 left. And I did the same thing over here. We have indeterminate tomatoes that I planted in these cages. And the reason I planted in there is they get like 12 feet tall. So these um, last longer than the other ones. So there's a little more shade here, even though they have plenty of sun. And then instead of letting them go 12 feet tall, which would be like up to here, <laughs> we're gonna let them grow up around there. And then we're gonna let them go on the fence line. So it'll be easier for us to harvest and we won't be trying to build these crazy tall um, tomato cages. These are just for the indeterminate, which is a fancy word for it keeps growing and growing and growing, almost like a vine. And then my smaller tomatoes that we were just talking about will be over here in regular tomato cages. So, and these are Romas. I'll be planting some heirloom ones later, um, probably where this blank space is. Anyway, so if you're warm enough, start looking at the farmer's almanac for your moon cycle for what to plant. Um, if you're still in a cool zone, I think right now is the perfect time to plant your seedlings in a little greenhouse or in your kitchen window. And uh, don't be afraid to plant things like uh, fall crops and summer crops together. If you are in a warm enough zone and you have this, don't just feel like it's wasted space. I mean, we can plop onions and tomatoes in like I talked about. So if you missed any of that, how to use the natural resources and chickens, just rewind it. It's not too long a video. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Joy at the Stevens Suburban Homestead. Say hi again. Hi. <laughs> and um, you're welcome to follow us on Pinterest. I have a board called Stevens Suburban Homestead. It's with a V. And we're on Facebook and YouTube. I load these up, you know, because they only stay on Periscope a couple days. Okay, thank you. Happy gardening. And um, you can give us hearts or go ahead and follow us to keep up. Take care. Peace out. Bye-bye.